Hello and welcome to my NTC Reviews channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Keystone 3. Now I have reviewed the Keystone 3 in the past, a few months ago, but it was a completely different firmware. So Keystone 3 has a multi-coin firmware, so you're able to host a plethora of different coins, including BTC, in your hardware wallet. Well, recently, and by popular demand, Keystone released a BTC-only firmware for the Keystone 3. So those of you that are BTC hodlers and wanted a crypto wallet that was specific to hodl your BTC, well, now that option is available. With all the other great bells and whistles that the Keystone 3 offers. As I mentioned earlier, I have reviewed the Keystone 3 with the multi-coin firmware. And in that video, I go over other options and other experience that I've had with other cold wallets. So if you are interested in checking out that video, I will link it here in the top right now, as well as link it in the description. But for today, it is all about BTC. So before I go any further, let me go into the specs on the Keystone 3. So getting into some of the specs, as I mentioned, and the whole purpose for this review is that the firmware is BTC only. By having BTC only firmware, it dramatically uh, decreases the chances of being hacked because there's less points of entry by having a BTC only firmware. The Keystone 3 is verifiable open source. It is 100% air gap, which means it is 100% offline, no Bluetooth, no NFC, and no Wi-Fi in order to connect. The Keystone 3 offers three secure elements. Your seed phrases and your fingerprints are stored separately, making it much more difficult for hackers to access your cold wallet. Another great feature is that the Keystone 3 holds up to three seed phrases. So that's basically like having three cold wallets at your disposal, all built into one hardware device. There is a self-destruct feature. So all the data is protected and safely housed inside your hardware wallet. And if it were to be tampered with physically, it will be wiped out and your information will not be accessed. The Keystone 3 is powered by Rust, so it is Rust based. There is a passphrase feature, which is an extra lock that you can add to the hardware wallet to increase your security. The Keystone 3 integrates with multiple wallets. The Keystone 3 is simple to use. It has a four inch touchscreen, allowing you to see much more information as you're sending and receiving. There is fingerprint verification that adds to the security and of course, speeds up the process while you're doing transactions. There is a camera, which will allow you to scan the QR codes, adding to its air gapped features and it has a built-in long-lasting battery. Keystone 3 has a test net where you can go ahead and sandbox certain features and try them out before actually doing real transactions. There is Dice Entropy which will allow you to make a special set of words if that's something that you need for your seed phrase. The Keystone 3 now includes multi-signature so that way you can actually share and disperse who has access to this specific wallet. There is a Shamir backup feature which will divide up your seed phrase into multiple backups. So you can go ahead and line up those features against other prominent hardware wallets that are on the market. And you'll probably see why I feel that currently the Keystone 3 is the best choice on the market, at least for my needs. And that doesn't mean it's not gonna change tomorrow. But as of right now, I have yet to find something that's as easy and as secure as this Keystone 3. When it comes to setting up the Keystone 3, specifically with the BTC only firmware, it is the same simple process that I went over in more detail in my previous video. So if you do want to get more detail or more specifics, definitely check out that video. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go through it briefly. And one of the main reasons for that is that Keystone on their website has a complete detailed walkthrough on setting up your Keystone 3. They did an excellent job, so I would refer you to that start page, follow those directions specifically, and you will be set up in no time. But as I said, I'll go through a quick glance, so to speak, at that setup. And from there, we'll go into sending and receiving a BTC transaction. All right, let's head over to the Keystone page to get started. So I will put a link in the description to the get started link on the Keystone site, but it's also super easy to find. All you gotta do is head over to their site, click on resources, get started, and you'll be right at this prompt to get your Keystone 3 set up. First thing we're looking at here is the language. 
So you'll select your language, go ahead and continue. Now there is a device verification. It does say skippable, but obviously for your first time, I suggest that you do not skip this step. It will basically tell you if you have a legit piece of hardware or not. So you'll go ahead and click on device verification. There will be a verify device button. You'll click on that. QR code will be set up. You'll go ahead and scan that with the camera on your Keystone 3 device. From there, you'll go ahead and enter the verification code that appears on your Keystone 3 device. And if everything's good to go, it'll tell you that you have a legit copy and you can go ahead and proceed from this prompt. Okay, once that's done, you'll go ahead, hit continue. And this is where we update the firmware. Now, keep in mind that we are talking about the BTC only firmware. If you are upgrading from a Keystone 3 device that has the multi-coin firmware, that will be completely wiped out and replaced with your BTC only. So make sure that you're aware of that. In my case, I opted for the two different wallets, one that's gonna be multi-coin and one that will be BTC only. It works well for me. Maybe that's an option that will work well for you also. Now, when you get started, you will wanna use the USB-C cable that came with your Keystone device. And you have two different methods. You can update it via the web itself, utilizing your USB port on the Keystone 3, or you can go ahead and use the SD card feature, which is what I opt for. I have spoken to Keystone multiple times and they had told me that it's fine, it is safe to hook up via the USB and do your updates that way. But for the purpose of keeping everything air-gapped and peace of mind for me, I opt for the SD card and trying to keep my device as air-gapped as possible. So you'll go ahead and click on that firmware update and you will see different options. We will go with the Bitcoin only firmware and from there, that's where you'll see that you can update via USB or you can update with the SD card. Make sure that your uh, SD card is formatted. Go ahead, download this uh, BTC only firmware dot bin file. And then what you'll do is you'll go ahead and drag and drop it onto your SD card. From there, place the SD card in the SD slot on the KS3 and follow the prompts on the hardware wallet to go ahead and get your firmware updated. Do keep in mind that the battery needs to be at least 20% charged in order for the firmware update to be able to begin. Uh, another question I get asked, is it okay to charge your Keystone 3 via your device, whether it's your computer, your laptop, your iPad, your phone? Once again, uh, detailed discussions with Keystone and they had told me there is no issue, no security issues at all if you do decide to charge your Keystone 3 device with your standard mobile device. But once again, me always erring on the side of caution, I end up just either hooking it up to an electrical outlet or using a power bank in order to charge my Keystone 3 wallet. Once again, just extra peace of mind on my side. You can opt to do whatever works best for you. Okay, once your device is updated, you go ahead and continue from here is where you can create or import your seed phrase. And you'll have a bunch of different choices, just like rolling the dice option that I brought up uh, initially when I started this video. If you have an existing uh, BTC seed phrase, you can go ahead and import that. Or once again, you can just go ahead and create a new one. Now there will be, let's say for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna create a new one and as you go through this, you're gonna to wanna to write down your seed phrase, your 24 words, and just keep in mind, if you do lose these 24 words, you will most likely lose complete access to all of your assets. So keep that in mind, you know, with this high security also comes with a lot of responsibility. So if your Keystone 3 or any hardware wallet were to malfunction, as long as you have that seed phrase, you can go ahead and opt for a different wallet or buy the same wallet and get a new one, import your seed phrase, and you will be good to go without losing your assets. And that's why I highly recommend not only writing it down in the beginning and double checking and triple checking, which of course the Keystone wallet will also have you uh, double check and confirm your seed phrase once it's created but you're also going to want to back it up on something sturdy like uh, there's so many different options out here as you could tell here that i have some from uh, crypto tag and bill Fodal and uh bit plates uh, keystone keystone itself has a couple different options make sure that your seed phrase is at the very least fire and waterproof 
During that step, you'll also be able to add a passphrase, which just gives you extra security and also gives you the option to log into your wallet as well as confirm your transactions. From there, you'll go ahead and pick the software wallet of your choice that you want to be the companion app for your hardware wallet that you'll utilize on your mobile device. And there are a bunch of different options, once again, depending on the operating system and the devices that you use, and maybe what you are already familiar with and want to keep utilizing. In the Keystone Wallet itself, you'll have a device settings options. You'll go into the settings and you'll see where you'll be able to pair it with the software wallet. Also in there, there's a bunch of other options where you can go ahead and set up your fingerprint, set up your pattern recognition, and just tweak the wallet and be able to utilize different settings to make the wallet more comfortable and more convenient for you to utilize for your daily needs or for your specific holding slash vault needs. And that was the quick no frills setup of your Keystone 3 BTC only firmware device. As you can tell, it's relatively simple and you can backtrack and go back if you did mess up. But the one thing that you really got to keep in mind is make sure that you have your seed flip phrase written down. Make sure you have it backed up on one of these metal devices and uh, in the future you'll be able to sleep much better you can trust me on that one okay so what i would like to do now is send a btc transaction i have my blue wallet here paired with the keystone 3 and it's on my mobile device zero btc in there now i do like to confirm my wallet address so if i'm here in the blue wallet on my mobile device i'll go ahead and click on receive and i will see the qr code and the actual wallet address below and what i want to do is i want to make sure that i go into my keystone and match up those addresses just for an extra layer of security so i'll go ahead and input my uh, passphrase here it opens up i'll go ahead to receive and i'll go ahead and check that address and as i look at it it is the same as the address in my blue wallet so I'm um, good to go on that aspect. So now I can go ahead and get out of the blue wallet itself. And I'm gonna go over to the account where I do have a bit of Bitcoin. And I'm gonna go ahead and send that BTC over to the address in the Keystone 3. So I have this account open, I'll go ahead and get it ready to scan. And here on my Keystone 3, I'm gonna go ahead and hit receive. QR code comes up. We already verified the address with the one in the blue wallet. And I'm going to go ahead and scan and being able to send. So here I'm going to put in $65 worth of BTC to send over to this wallet. Asking me to confirm my identity. So let me go ahead and do that. And the total BTC will be $78.93 including that fee so let's go ahead send the btc and it is sent so now we wait for it to arrive in our keystone wallet okay so that took about a minute and as you can tell here there already is the pending transaction so it'll take some time to go ahead, go ahead and verify and confirm throughout the BTC network. Once again, nothing to do with the actual Keystone wallet. This all has to do with the Bitcoin network at this point. Okay, so I'm checking my blue wallet. It's about 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later. I actually said it executed fully with all the confirmations after about 18 minutes. So you can tell here, shows me what I have in sats and it shows the 65 US dollars that I transferred over. All right, so I'm here in my blue wallet in the account that I had just created for this video with the BTC that I had sent over. Now I want to get it out of here and transfer it to a different wallet to show you how to send a transaction. So I'm in my blue wallet here. I'm going to go ahead and send. I copied the address, the BTC address that I wanted to send it to. So now all I have to do is paste it into that field. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send the full balance which should be the $65 minus whatever fees. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. QR code comes up. I go ahead over to my Keystone wallet, hit scan, head over to the UPC code, hit scan. It's telling me here now the amount that I am going to send, which is of course the amount that I had in there that I just transferred before, minus the fees. I'll go ahead and approve that. It's asking me to enter my passcode. I'll go ahead and enter that. 
Now it's asking me to scan this with the actual wallet. So now I'm going to go ahead and confirm. It is scanned. Send now. And we have our blue check mark. We are done. And as you can tell here, we have that pending transaction of sending out to my other address. So as you can saw, completely air gapped. Nothing was connected to any device, just utilizing the QR codes and sending and receiving was actually that simple and more importantly, that safe. So bottom line, if you are in the market for a BTC only hardware wallet, that is definitely a cut above the rest. Excellent customer support, good active community, continual updates. Definitely take a look at the Keystone 3 by Keystone.